Welcome back to the channel. My name is Tronage and today we're going to be talking about... I know it doesn't look like much, but it's actually FPV Crate for September 2019. Want to see what's inside this blank bag? Stick around. FPV Crate has uh, had its first change since its uh, debut, and that was the first two boxes we received, if you care to recall, were the box, and it had like a clear plastic shrink wrap on it that then they put their labeling on. Now they've switched from that to now using the generic gray plastic bags that you, you know, you stick something in, you peel a thing off and it seals it shut. And then it looks like they wrapped a piece of tape around the outside. So the reason why I'm showing it to you like this is because this is how I received it. So, you know, that's one little change I thought was very interesting that it wasn't the clear shrink wrap. Now, maybe there was a problem with the clear shrink wrap coming off and maybe it wasn't as durable. And since the shipping label was affixed to that clear shrink wrap, maybe then as that got removed, the shipping label was removed and maybe boxes got lost. So they've switched to something a little bit more robust. However, it doesn't look as nice. Personally, I don't see why it needs any kind of thing because both um, quad box and drone drop just put the label as the sealing part on the box itself. It doesn't need a covering, but it's also kind of nice. So then you don't know what's inside, I guess. I don't know. But anyhow, this is how I, I received it. So what we're going to do is we're going to open this up. I'm going to bring you all in close and we're going to go over it, see what's inside. Then we're going to do a little bit of a cost analysis and see if it's worth what we paid and what kind of value mm -hmm. can be had. And then we'll talk about these items and, and see, you know, what's their use for and, and stuff like that. But before we get started with that, slam that subscribe button. While you're at it, hit that bell icon. Makes finding these videos a whole lot easier, keeps you in the know when I post videos like this one, and it helps support the channel as well. So make sure you go and do that. All right, so let's come on in close and let's crack this open. All right, guys, we have our plain box here. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to take this wrapping off of it to look at the box itself, and then we'll crack it open. So let's cut this off. Okay, now that we have that off, it looks like everything else aside from that is the same on the exterior. The box is still the same box. It still has that oh so lovely velvety vinyl sticker that I cannot wait to cut. Ooh. Um, but other than that, everything looks the same. So it looks like they just put it in a bag instead of the shrink wrap. Um, and my guess is that because it may have been um, coming off and losing the shipping labels that are attached to it. All right, so let's cut open our thing. Oh. So smooth. Oh, love that. Okay, a little bit of a pre-open, a little bit of a flip. Let's get things lined up and let's get started. So as always, I'm just gonna take this guy and move it to the side because sometimes there's coupon codes. Some Yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. So there's like coupon codes and and spoilers and all kinds of stuff in the little packet here, but I'm gonna pull that off to the side. Next up, we have the sticker sheet. And once again, as with all the other previous sticker sheets, it's very heavy duty feeling. A little bit of Umagod action on here. Very colorful, loving the looks of it. Pretty, pretty darn cool stuff. Moving on, we have the packing material that comes with all the FPV crates. Isn't it wonderful? I'm just kidding. Um, into the props here. So we have some, I'll get them all lined up here. Okay, so are they the same or are they different? Okay, five by five by three, five by five by three, five by five by three. Okay, so what we got here, we got three different props. 
but they're the same size prop. They're just different colors, which makes me very happy. So we have it's Lumineer 5x5x3, five by five by otherwise known as a 50-50. They're calling it the Butter Cutter. And it's uh, this comes in clear. It comes in wild dot dot dot. I'm going to guess that's wild pink maybe. And this one just says dot dot dot. But it's clearly a red color. So that is pretty, pretty nifty. Next up, I'm going to go for the shirt just for the sake of that I can get to it. And I want to save the other stuff for last. So let's see what we got here. Oh, that is cool. So here we go. So if you're not familiar, and you can see it all. It says hashtag FPV crater. And they're playing off the word crater as being like a crater on like the moon with the astronaut and the little rocket ship drone here in case you didn't, if you need me to spell it out for you why it says that. The reason is because on the boxes, uh, on the lid, it always has up here, it says, you know, become an FPV crater. And the idea is that you um, post, like I do, my videos of me unboxing these things. And because it's FPV crate, that makes me an FPV crater, I guess. Okay. Lots of stuff still in here. Okay, so let's go over the thing that's obviously not that high end, which is the um, battery straps. Clearly with the Umagod oh logo on it. Uh, I am liking that it is a metal buckle on them. Let's uh, check them out those far as size and style. So they don't have any kind of like silicone grip to them. They are very smooth. Uh, let's see for size though. Yeah, they're the pretty much the right size for, you know, a normal like uh, 4S or 5S type pack, but they just don't have that much of that grippiness to them. Um, they're not like very sticky. I mean, I mean, if I get a little bit like my fingers are like a little bit wet, maybe they're a little sticky. No, not really. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm more fond of the ones that have a form of silicone or something that grips the battery when you use them. And the other thing that's, you know, you, when you put these logos and stuff on them, the funny part about it is that all goes to the inside. So when it's on your quad, all you see is the little tiny tab about the Velcro. So it's like the rest of it's all into the inside. So I don't know, just my take on it, but I feel like uh, battery straps are, as always, a dime a dozen. If you need it, you need it. If you have it, you don't need any more, but they're always fun to have, a little extra, a little bonus, if you will. Put those to the side. Uh, what else we got here? Let's go with this stuff. This looks like Uma Grip. Oh, okay. So this looks like Uma Grip, but I can feel it's thinner. I would say, I mean, I don't have measurements on me, but I'm sure it feels like it's about half the thickness. So I'm guessing if you're trying to shave every little possible ounce and gram off of your quad, if your grip was a little bit thinner, it'd weigh a little bit less. And that's this, this is just a little bit thinner. And it says uh, FPV Crate Special Edition. So I'm guessing, you know, that's why it's green instead of um, black that it usually is. Don't know about that. I don't know if the, I mean, it maybe looks like it's, oh no, mate, because that might be the top layer. I think it's green instead of black, but it's just like, it feels like about half the thickness of the normal stuff, if I had to take a guess. All right, next up, I see the Mamba logo. I see two Mamba logos. So which one should we go for first? All right, let's go with this one first. We have the Mamba Flashbang LED Board SW401 Power. Okay, so what this is, ladies and gentlemen, this is the, um, it's basically your race wire with the LEDs on it, is what this is. It's uh, where you put it on your motors, you attach your motors on one end, you attach your motors on the other end, you have them LEDs in the middle. The difference with these versus the other ones, the other ones just get power from your motors and that's that, you don't have to do anything. These actually, I think, can do that, but you can also run them so that you can do them, make them addressable or something along those lines, so that's pretty cool and I will have to experiment with that, which is pretty cool. And this Mamba pack, is a Mamba F40 MK2 high efficiency ESC. That's a 40 amp ESC right there, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very pleased about that. So this will actually go well with some of the other flight controllers that we have previously got. All right, that I'm pretty excited about. That's a high ticket item right there, folks. All right, so to recap, we got the uh, 40 amp ESC. We have the motor wire LED things. We have the Umagod light. 
We got the Umagod straps. We got three sets of props. We got a t-shirt. We got some packing material. And we got a sticker sheet. And then we have the goodie bag of coupon codes and description of what we got. All right, so let's run some numbers, see what we got in this box. All right, guys, I ran those numbers for you. And you know, FPV Crate does do their little uh, thing here. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But I ran my own numbers for you and here they are. So let's talk about these line by line and we'll go through them one at a time. So first up, we have the props. And you know, when I first saw these, I was saying, please don't be three different versions of a prop. Give me three bags of the same prop. And that's what they did. There are three different colors, but they are all the same prop. And for reference, this is, uh, I think tangerine is what they're calling this orangey red color. I thought it was just red, but they're fancy pants and calling it tangerine. And these are wild willy pink is what they are. So I wanted to make sure I got the correct colors out there for you. However, they are the exact same prop, just different colors. Two of them are like clear, one of them is solid. And I love getting me some props. And three bags is like a perfect amount to see if you like them. And just don't be cheap. I mean, I, I used to be there. I used to be there. You crash, your props are like, oh, like, yeah. And you're like, oh, I just bend them back. Oh, yeah, that's good enough. And you fly. But I've also had it where props like have exploded in midair because of vibrations and that, and then your quad falls out of the out of the air. So for the cost of a couple of, you know, how much does it cost per prop? I don't even know. Under a dollar, you save your whole quad falling out of the sky. Plus, it just flies better. So don't be cheap. Uh, these are 50/50 style, which is what I usually I'm flying a Dial Cyclone 50/50s usually. So these are the Lumineer version of a 50/50, which should be a pretty good prop. So I'm excited to give those a spin, literally. And I'm really digging that Wild Willy pink. It's kind of like cool. Kind of goes with the whole Tronage theme. Next, that comes down to the Uma Grip straps, and the problem I'm having with these is that there's just no grip. In fact, looking up some reviews, instead of Uma Grip, they were calling them Uma Slip. Because uh, there's there's no grip quality to these whatsoever. So I I really, I, I would not recommend these at all. I would kind of avoid them unless you're a big Uma God fan and you want to have this on your quad. But they don't hold, I guess, I guess maybe the argument would be that if you're using the Uma grip, you don't need lateral, like, like here's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so here's your Uma grip. We'll talk about this in a minute. It's on your quad. Then comes your battery pack. And then comes the strap holding it, like a little sandwich, okay? So if the grip is grippy enough, you don't really have to worry about the battery sliding this way. You're just more concerned the battery coming off. So then this battery strap would then kind of make sense because it's gonna just hold, but it's not gonna offer any kind of side to side protection for keeping that battery from moving. Personally, my my pick are the Newbie Drone battery straps. They have like a whole sticky silicone, it's, it's nice, they're really nice. I love them, they're really grippy, they hold everything down, even if you don't have Uma grip or any kind of thing underneath, they do a really good job of just holding things in place and keeping it from slipping. These, on the other hand, do not. Now, uh, like I said, if, if you have the Uma grip, then these are, you know, they're just holding down. They'll do that job. However, if you notice on the thing, I have them flagged in orange and I have them at $1.99, but in the description it says $5.99. The reason is because these are $5.99. If you wanted to go and buy yourself a two pack of these straps, you're going to be paying $5.99, $6. They're $3 a piece. I, I kind of felt like they're just way overpriced just because they have the, uh, the oh my God, logo stamped on them. You know, like you can get battery, the, the newbie drone ones are $1.50 and they perform better, I feel. You can buy just, you know, anyone's brand name ones from their stores. They have them for like $1.99 even. Get FPV site has battery straps that are $1.99. So I feel like as far as value goes, they're really a $1.99 strap. They're not a $6 strap. They don't perform anything better. But you know, if you wanted that particular uh, strap, 
you'd be paying $5.99, but I'm only going to credit them $1.99 because it's not really worth it. Moving on to the Uma Grip Light. Um, it says on the back here, FBV Crate Special Edition, but I really don't know what's so special about it because you can go and buy this green grip, the same thing, on Get FPV's website. That's not FPV Crate Special Edition. So the only thing I can imagine that's the special edition is the sticker that's on the packaging. But the actual thing itself... I don't see any difference from it than anything else. They sell it in this green color and they also sell it in a blue color uh, on the website. So I'm not seeing that there's anything special edition about this that we got in the box. My assumptions are correct in that it's about a half thickness because in the description it's listing it as half the weight. So if you have something that's half the weight that looks the same, probably is about half as thick. Also, instead of it being black, they say it's a translucent green. But remember, this looks nice and bright and cool when it's on this silver background. But if it's translucent or like see-through and you put that on black carbon fiber, it's gonna look very, very, very dark. Like you may not even see it. So I don't know what color it'll turn when you put it on a black background, but don't think you're gonna get this awesome green color if it is any kind of see-through. Actually, I guess I can look and see if it's see-through because this package I'll just open. We'll figure this out right now live. Oh, it's got a 3M black, I mean, solid background. Let me just peel it back a little bit and take a peek. Yeah, for reference, I'm gonna stick it onto my black lens cap here. And you can see it's gonna be, I mean, you still get a pretty good color, but it's not as bright as you would expect it to be. So that's the Uma Grip Light. And I guess this really only comes into play if you're worrying about like every single gram and you wanna shave every gram off, whether it be that you're racing or you're falling under the 250 gram limits. And let's say you're, cause they say that that, weigh, that pad weighs seven grams. And let's say you're coming in at your seven gram short. Well, then you can swap out an Uma Grip for that. And now you're seven grams cause the Uma Grip I think is 14. So to each their own. Next up we have the uh, LED, uh, power boards for the motors and I was looking at these online and the pictures of them and here's my problem with these per se I don't think they were really designed well but maybe kind of but it's awkward what I mean by that is they work like race wire where you can hook up your motor wires on one end you hook up your motor wires on the other end and off you go and you don't have to worry about your props cutting your motor wires instead it'll just break your LEDs however it doesn't look like the LEDs are tied into those motor wires because in the uh, description on the website, it says that they need an LED, a ground, and a five volt power in order to function. So some of the other ones grab their power straight from the taps for the motors. These apparently don't. So that means you have to run separate wires to these as you would any other LED to run them. That's not such the big deal. The, the problem I have is that addressable LEDs, if you're not familiar, let me give you a quick introduction into addressable LEDs. If you want to use the function in Betaflight, for example, that you can make specific LEDs, specific colors, they have to all be like daisy chained in a row so that Betaflight says LED number four, LED number six, 10, 12, 11, Two, it every single LED is numbered in the software so that it knows which LED should be which color. And in order to do that, all your LEDs have to be in one long string. It doesn't matter where they are, but you have to like, if you have three LEDs here and then three more LEDs here, well, you would have the in go in, then you have LED, 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 then there'd be an out pin and you'd run a wire from the out pin to the in pin on your next one, and then LED, LED, LED. So you have to put wires between each of these so that as far as the flight controller is concerned, they're all in one single strand. Now, if you think about the way your quad is set up, you have your flight controller in the middle and you have your four legs that come off of it. And the way that they created these is one end has the in pin and the other end has the out pin. So if you wanted to put these on your quad and you wanted to maintain that full addressable so that every single LED on these is fully addressable, that means you'd have to run a wire from your flight controller to your uh, to this board on the in pin. And then on the other end of the pin where the motor is, is the out. 
So you have to attach a wire there and run it back to the flight controller or back to wherever the next, you know, maybe back to the flight controller and down to the in pin on the next one. And then run a wire back to the flight controller and to the in pin on the next one. And then back. You get what I'm trying to say, that it would have been nice. I mean, I know it's very thin and trying to solder it is could be difficult, but it would have been nice if the in pin and the out pin were on the same end of the board. So that way... You didn't have to have a wire coming back as much. You could just have like two wires, one wire for the in, one wire for the out, and they both all, all would terminate. You don't have a separate wire coming out the other end and then you turning and coming back. So that's my only complaint about it. Also would have been nice if they got power and ground from the motor wires, just like all the other boards do. So that way, instead of having a in, a power, and a ground pin on one end, and an out, a power, and a ground pin on the other end, what they could have done is grab the power and the ground and whatnot from the motor cables, just like all the other LED boards do, and then have the addressable just have on one end, have an in and an out. And that's it. You won't need power because the power is coming from the motor wires. If that, I mean, I don't know if that's technically possible, but I'm just saying if you can have lights on a race wire that don't have any power running to them. It's just grabbing it from the motor power. You should be able to do that with addressable LEDs too, I would assume. But I guess they're, they're engineers or however. They, there's got to be a reason they didn't do that, but I just don't like the solution as is. I'll probably end up using them because I absolutely love LEDs. Putting them on quads just makes them look sick, insane, cool. And especially when you're doing like twilight flying or dusk type flying where you, know, you can really catch someone's eye it's really fun to do now you know teach their own but I like them so I'll probably figure out some way to do it now mind you you're not required if you don't want them all to be addressable individually you don't have to do that because what you can do is if you attach the same wire to the four ends let's call it okay then the first LED on each of them will all be the same LED so, you know, it's sort of like a fork in the road. If the, the sig if the, uh, how do I explain this? Here's what I'm trying to say. Normally, if you have race wire, so let's call this being a piece of race wire and here's your LEDs. And then your three motor wires on that end, your three motor wires on that end. You have an in and you have an out pin. Normally then you have another one of these on the next arm with your three wires coming out, LED, 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 LED. And you take, you have a wire from the flight controller going to your in, and then a wire from your, from the out would then have to go back up along here, and then come back down the next leg to this side's in. And then you'd have the out, and then this would have to come back. And then, you know, you get what I'm trying to say. What you can also do, you're not required to do it like this. If you wanted to have it, instead of running this wire, so get rid of this wire, you take this same wire that you ran to this end, you run that same wire to this end, you basically make four wires come out of one, you split it four times and you run that to the four arms, then this LED will be addressed as the same as this LED. And this LED would be the same as this LED. So it essentially would say if this is LED number 0, 1, 2, 3, this would be 0, 1, 2, and 3. If you did it the way I said from coming from the out that way, well, then it would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So you could address these individually. If you split it like this and you run it just to the ends, then the first LED all is the LED zero, and the second LED for all of them would be LED one. So you're not required to do this if you want all your LEDs to be the same. I hope that didn't overcomplicate something that should be kind of simple, but it's really just, you know, whether or not all your LEDs are in a line or whether the four of them are basically mirror images of each other so that the first LED on all four of them is zero if you run the wires to the end. That's it. Whew. Hope you hope I you probably are even more confused than that, so don't even worry about it. If you're not thinking about buying LEDs, then don't even worry about it. That was just a way to try to explain something that I wasn't happy with the design of. Next up, we have the Mamba 40 amp ESC. Awesome ESC, love the Mamba series of stuff, 
Um, they, they offer great value and great products. I'm very pleased with them. I really got no complaints and also included in here I saw is a 1000 microfarad low ESR capacitor. So that's always a good addition to just filter out some of that noise and make your ESCs work wonderfully. And that actually is a pretty high ticket value item at around $40, which is really cool. However, now looking down this row, you see once we total everything up, we are still just above about 20 bucks, which as I've said previously, $20 is sort of my, as long as I get that awesome job, happy with what I got and I got some pretty decent value. That's what I would consider, what I would expect as the value to be received in a mystery box, about $20. And we're at about $22, so that's pretty good. And we're kind of almost sort of tied with uh, quad boxes uh, value as well, which is kind of interesting that they're all at that same price point. Now, yes, I did knock some dollars off for the Umagod straps, but if you wanted to throw those in there, I, I that's like four more dollars. So you'd be at like, what, $26 value? So it's not terrible that I did that, but I'm just, that's what I'm calling it because that's how I feel. And it's, that's what I'm doing. So deal with it. <laughs> um, but so, so basically what I'm saying here is that, um, we're just getting the normal, the normal average value. And then lastly, there were the coupon codes that were involved. However, they are um, much higher end purchases. I know I did include the coupon code info with the quad box one, but because it was sort of a, a, a smaller purchase, you basically, you spend $75 and you get $25 free because you're buying three motors, you get a fourth one for free. The uh, coupon codes that were involved here, I'll let you know, they were get $30 off of Fat Shark and uh, ORQA uh, products at GetFPV. They were take a 10% off of anything purchased at the Umagod website and get $30 off of DJI products on GetFPV. However, the reason why I'm not including those into the value is because those are like very large purchases because the DJI one is going to be a very expensive purchase and the Fat Shark or ORQA one is going to be a very expensive purchase to just get $30 back. Um, and a percentage one, how do you even include that? So the, they are there and just I'm mentioning them, but I'm not going to put them into the analysis like I did with the other one. And remember, even with Quad Bucks, I didn't actually include them for the totaling and comparing. I just wanted to let you know that it was there and I'm doing the same here. The FPV crate, they do do their own little cost analysis here as I'm showing. Uh, everything pretty much checked out. What's interesting is that I've always been calling the shirt $17.99 for quad box. That's just sort of what I thought the shirt should be worth and, and whatnot. And it's very interesting that the shirt comes in here at $18. You know, that's like a number that I just kind of pulled out of, you know, thin air. And they're, I guess, agreeing with me that that's what a quad box or FPV crate shirt should be. So that's kind of cool. I don't know if they're, you know, checking out the channel and whatnot, but that's kind of uh, interesting. Um, and then they have the coupon codes that are listed here without prices because obviously you don't know if you're going to be using them or not. But this is exactly like I'm doing. I'm not including those prices in the discount because you may or may not use them. So as you see, not only myself, but FPV Crate is not including the coupons in their advertised value, which I think is the correct thing to do. I hope I got you some good information here because I can definitely tell you that this box is pretty much on par as an average box from drone drop or quad box where we're within that 20 to 25 dollar value available so i think the honeymoon period is pretty much now over but we'll see maybe this might be now we're in a little bit of a cycle where we had some good ones now we have an average one let's see what the next one is but I will say that they are base, they are on par with everyone else now. So I wouldn't say that they're any better or worse than any of the other boxes. Only time will tell as we go through and do our future analysis. I will say, you know, spoiler alert for the when drone drop gets in and we do the cost analysis that we compare all three. But I will say I have already peaked and I, that FPV crate and quad box are still neck and neck. They're like a dollar or two difference between them for since uh, July when FPV Crate had their first release. So 
Let's see what Drone Drop has to offer. I'll wait till my box shows up. It's kind of ironic that Drone Drop is the last one to the party this time. And it was actually kind of cool that Quad Box was the first one to the party. So we'll see. Only time will tell. Once I get my box, you'll be the first to know. So as always, my name's Tronage. Fly strong. Fly strong.